we've got some excellent, excellent, excellent news here. Courtesy of Deadline that I forgot to mention. Big up Shane Gillis. Absolute massive win considering, you know, he was one of the last cancelled comedians. Comedians don't really get cancelled nowadays or never did really. Um, I think I'm going to play for you a clip later on in the show that kind of shows, I think, um, Tom and Burt Kreischer um, talking about cancel culture again and it's really odd that comedians seem to have a real infatuation with cancel culture like they're desperate to be victims and stuff but then when you look at the business of cancel culture it kind of makes sense it does give you a little bit of a pep it makes you go viral and if you can weather the storm it does effectively help you further your career in some way shape or form so it does make sense why these um professional um attention seekers would be so eager to be cancelled in some way shape or form because they know it's going to be able to help their career so Shane was the last one I can remember to get cancelled and his cancellation was a bit dumb because effectively he said a bit of a racy, edgy joke when he was doing his show, um, my, uh, Matt and Shane's My Secret Time, which is obviously one of the best um, comedy podcasts out there legitimately because they just stick to trying to be funny. It's quite refreshing. There's not a lot of politics talk and shit. There's not a lot of fucking life lessons and a lot of lecturing. It's just two fucking degenerate comedians just trying to make each other laugh and guests fucking love it. So I'm a big fan of Matt and Shane's Secret Time. Um, he said a racy joke, but unfortunately for him, at the same time they said the racy joke, he was he, he just got confirmed um, as one of the new kind of, you know, um, host of comedians for SNL in that particular season. And then I guess people went back into his history, found a clip, uploaded it, and obviously that led to him being fired. And it was a big deal because that, you know, apart from the consistent check, I'm sure the ability to maybe grow from that SNL um, job, network, write really funny fucking sketches, be on TV all the time was an amazing opportunity. So I'd imagine that really probably bummed him out that he wasn't able to take that job. But I think in the end, it did basically work out because effectively this kind of put him into the good graces of Joe Rogan pretty late. He had a bit of a, some dodgy Joe Rogan appearances here and there, but it kind of made him more familiar with Joe Rogan. It kind of made his podcast more, more you know, more well known known it may be tightened up his comedy and in general when it comes to specials and shit he's him and matt have been two of the ones i've kind of enjoyed in the last 18 months or so so a big up shane for that particular one so this article is pretty good because essentially it proves that he's been able to kind of single-handedly just with pure hard work i think hard work and talent and just being a good comedian has been able to go from somebody that was technically cancelled to being back allowed into um the hollywood industry because netflix is basically a part of hollywood and this is basically his indication that he is now everything's been forgiven so this is courtesy of shane gill i'm um, sorry deadline it says shane gillis to make netflix comedy debut in september because his last special came out on youtube so now that's going to the next one's going to be out in netflix which is a fucking big win um and also he's not doing any funny games no andrew schultz games about we don't need netflix and you sign with netflix then you don't put it on netflix and you do like none of that shit it's, it was on youtube he proved his worth he showed that talent he was and now he's going to get a special on netflix fucking love it it says Comedian Shane Gillis will make his Netflix debut on September the 5th with a stand-up special called Beautiful Dogs. Filmed earlier this year in Virginia during his Shane Gillis live tour, Beautiful Dogs is a follow-up to Shane Gillis' 2021 YouTube special, Shane Gillis Live in Austin. It went on to garner more than 30 million views. Yeah, fucking fantastic. Um, One of the best bits I love about Shane Gillis in that special, what was the one? Was it the one about like little girls wearing like... um? uh bathing suits or something was it bathing suits i'm not sure if i remember it correctly i think it was little girls or kids wearing bathing suits or something that bit of the special where you just dropped that dead hand and everyone was kind of awkwardly trying to figure out if that was a joke or a statement and he made it into a joke by just saying as many like because he's got a real talent for saying for not using a lot of words but getting across what he's basically saying it kind of reminded me of one of my favorite um louis ck bits that's incredibly uncomfortable but really unfunny it's the joke that louis ck does in one of his specials where he says ah oh, um pedophilia like pedos must know the risk that they take by being pedos but the reward must be so good the reward you know what i mean that it just can't stop themselves and he basically tries to rationalize the mind of a pedo and why they would consistently do something like that that is abhorred by most of society 
you know, the only c- conclusion that he has is that it must be so amazing that the that the fucking uh, risk is worth the squeeze. <laughs> and it legitimately is one of the, my favourite bits. I remember watching it. It honestly makes you physically uncomfortable. Um, but you end up laughing after a while. So I fucking love it. So, I've, um, so I think Shane Gibbs has the same like level of talent i'd say of a louis ck in my in my own opinion especially of the new guys he's really fucking good it continues here it says gillis um also plays gilly on a peacock original series called bupkiss that stars pete davidson and joe pesky i didn't know that actually i haven't watched that before if you guys have watched bupkiss let me know in the comments if you like it um the series which also features eddie falco pyramid on may 4th um comes from universal television and lord michael's broadway uh, broadway video isn't lord michael's from snl Okay, so this means he's uh, he's fine then. So I guess Lorn is fine with with Shane. So the cancellation thing was just probably more so a optics thing, right? They didn't want to, they didn't want to fucking be associated with somebody that says some racy stuff about Asian people. But the fact that he's he's already working for a Lorn Michaels owned company shows that he was already good anyway. So anyway, it continues. It says um Gillis other credits include starring in as well as co-creating writing for a YouTube sketch series called Gilly and Keeves, alongside producer produ- producing partner John McKeever. Beautiful Dogs was directed by McKeever and produced by All Things Comedy. Oh, big up Bill Burr, All Things Comedy um credit there for the Netflix special. Nice. And AGI Entertainment. Gillis is represented by CAA, AGI Entertainment, your Levin, Barnes, and Kritzman. Gillis might be one of the safest, coolest. Balenciaga pump fund. <laughs> you guys are idiots. You guys are real idiots. You know that. You guys are stupendous idiots, idiots. I've seen the conversations on the red on the fucking Discord. I didn't engage. I didn't take part because I'm not having my stylistic choices mocked by some of you guys. But I see what you've been saying about my pumps. I see all of you's and I'm not taking it slightly. And I'm not taking it lightly, actually. When I do eventually get them and I'm able to freak them amazingly, I don't want to hear any of you coming back around saying, Agostino, they actually look quite nice. Sorry about what I said, Agostino. No, no, no. Keep your fucking shit to yourself, okay? I see what you say, all of you, and you're lucky I haven't banned you. I haven't banned any of you guys for the shit you've been saying about my Balenciaga pumps, okay? Like, relax. Take it easy, all right? In this stream, we respect Balenciaga. We respect Demna. And we respect Ye, Yeezy, right? Those are the three people we respect. Everybody else can go take a hike. But let's respect them then, Balenciaga. Be careful. Anyway, but, but pick up Koyla. I appreciate all of you. <laughs> Honestly, man, you guys are destroying me, man, these pumps. Honestly, I'm going to fucking prove you guys wrong with these pumps. You're going to see my vision. You're going to see what I mean by them. But yeah, what I was going to say, um, I think Guinness, saying Guinness is probably the nicest, most level-headed normal caa represented person i can think of because when i think of caa i think of like brendan and brian callen right that type of caa person where they're always talking about their caa agent they're always talking about going to eat with them at some fucking steakhouse somewhere about what they told about you know what i mean there's always that kind of really cringy sucky up your hollywood almost Ari Gold type relationship whereas I feel like Shane just like you know does his job does what he needs to do you know enjoys himself and the people that need to do what they need to do are doing in the background it's not something he kind of wears as a fucking badge or something right or a crown on his head like I'm represented by CIA so it's pretty cool to see but in general I'm really happy for him because like I said I think it definitely does prove that good work trumps all like if you just do good work if you just go back to kind of doubling down on trying to be funny on trying to put out good cool content on trying to grow your audience eventually if you're not a bad person you haven't raped anybody you haven't you know touched up any young kids and shit you'll be fine you'll be welcome back into the fray but if you're these other guys who have allegedly may have raped and may have diddled then you're fucked it kind of is what it is and you have to just be okay with doing your podcast and you know doing your stuff on youtube and whatever it may be and doing going on the road but thinking that you're ever going to get back into the hollywood good graces when you're when you've done stuff that most people who who aren't you would get thrown into prison for that's a bit naive and i also feel especially happy for shane because in my opinion one of the most funniest things that hopefully i can find it on youtube but i remember specifically when shane got cancelled or, or got fired from snl brendan Schulb of all people was one of the first people to be very vocal about why he should have got fired and basically was one of the people that said with his whole chest he thinks their show isn't funny 
right? It's not a funny show. Um, the podcast is terrible, which is incredible coming from what, you know, considering, you know, how fucking terrible, you know, fucking the fire and the kid is. So to see him make this comeback is fucking beautiful. Um, and let me see if I can find the fucking clip here. It says something about um, the podcast is not good. Let's see it. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, there we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. It's right there. The first one there. They made. They even made a clip out of it. These fucking idiots. You know what's funny? They both don't know what was gonna happen after this, isn't it? They don't both don't have no idea what the future would hold for them, right? Chris getting cancelled, Brian getting cancelled. Like they're all here fucking pontificating and talking with so much glee about somebody else getting cancelled. We're fine, and then they had no idea what the future was gonna hold for them, did they? <laughs> The karmic retribution of Callan is still the one that fucking makes me laugh to this day. He actually tried to throw Chris under the bus. I don't know him. We never hung out. We had dinner one time. We never went on tour together. Even though the entire premise of their relationship or how they, you know, marketed it on social was the fact that they were super close and they did 10 minute podcasts together and they were always bumping into each other outside and doing little sketches and skits and stuff and then he had the fucking nerve to get on camera and say i don't know the guy <laughs> because he wanted to protect himself and then a week later he gets accused of rape <sighs> karmic retribution undefeated fucking long ago that time you referenced chinks you're not wow. getting Saturday Night live wow Hey, yo, Brendan, relax, bro. <laughs> these, these. Let's see. Jimmy O. Yang. Because he's, he's an Asian comic, so I, I, don't know. I get that. Jimmy's a great comic. I'm on the same bill. I'm oh, Jimmy O. Yang is the guy that hates Tim Dillon, isn't it, I think. He hates Tim Dillon. He hates most of those LA types. Jobo. Had nightmare last night of six feet, six inches long haired Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> big up Jumbo 13 appreciate it. yeah big up yeah i think i say this I, I i've said this a lot but i honestly think it's true um the universe god buddha allah whoever you believe in did all of us a favor by making joe five foot two or whatever he is because if you think he's this insufferable this obnoxious just imagine if he was a former marine special forces ex-cia agent six foot four like, do you know what I mean? With long flowing hair. Oh, he would not shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? He would be pushing in our faces. So the fact that he doesn't, you know, look like Aubrey Marcus or something is a good thing. You know what I mean? Same thing goes for Cam Haynes. If Cam Haynes was taller and he looked like, if if, Tam, if Cam Haynes looked like that guy that, that, that wrote a book that's made into an Amazon series, I forgot his name. Um, He's a fucking author. He makes his Amazon series. That was actually quite good. Um, Fuck. I forgot the name of it but if cam haynes looked the way he thinks he looks in his head he'd be way more insufferable so people don't like cam haynes but if cam haynes was taller and didn't look as you know because cam haynes basically looks like an outdoor version of brian callen i feel like right cam haynes is basically brian callen if he grew up in fucking texas or some shit or idaho you know what i mean but if he was a bit more taller looking then he'd be whew. all the time he's a great comic he put as a comedian, I usually side with comedians on sensitive subjects, but this is just plain racist. It's truly disgusting. Stand up against this is just as important as supporting our Asian brothers and sisters. See, this I'm not, man has to go. I'm not Chinese. I will say this. And I've said this. Before. So yeah, that's another point. Chinese point people, We're not Chinese. Chinese. By, by the way, I'm I've said Chinese. this before. I've yeah, said this many right. times. Chinese people in this country have dealt with a fuckload of racism and a fuckload of violence and a, 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 like a way more than people know. They just have. They don't. They just don't voice it. But th th there is no question that that chi people of Chinese descent, ethnic Chinese all over the world have done. Brian Callen speaking up for the ethnic Chinese. Stop Asian hate. This guy, when he starts bloviating about these points, you just want to fucking throw a fucking brick for his face in it. Like, shut the fuck up, man. Honestly. This is like classic rich boy talk. Whenever you go to a house party, there's always one of these kind of rich kids around, like bloviating and pontificating about the plight of others in an effort to make themselves look like a good person. Bruh, just stop raping. You don't need to be getting on your soapbox talking about saving people like this. Just stop raping. Stop raping and you'll be fine. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. <laughs> Incredibly well in every culture they immerse themselves in because their culture, frugality and all that, and, and, and hard work and all that. But they have dealt with a fuckload, not only of prejudice, but 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 like literal massacres. Let me ask you, Brian. Let me, you so think I understand Shane Gillis is racist. No, but I, no, that's my point. I understand people's sensitivity, but but it, that's the thing. That's the thing I don't understand about these guys. No one actually cares if Shane Gillis is not racist or not. 
no like no one you know these guys think that we're they're in these guys think that they're deserving of like i don't know of like further investigation that way people just hear what you say the stupid things you said over the years and sometimes it can come back to haunt you in shane gillis's case he didn't whine and cry about it as much as others did which i think is very respectable because i still think he got done dirty because it felt like somebody went out of their way to kind of get him cancelled but let's also be a little bit chill and say if he didn't say that racy off the cuff shitty joke he would still be an snl now it's not that deep it really isn't that deep and sometimes if you're a comedian and you want to say what you want to say you also have to be okay with some people not being okay with what you say and those having real life consequences and in terms of causing your losing your lose for you to lose a job but it isn't that deep like let's just relax you guys are not freedom fighters do you know what i mean you're not fucking t- you know you're not knocking down the berlin wall with your fucking talk you're not freeing fucking slaves you're just telling shit jokes on stage just relax sometimes you hit one sometimes you miss one sometimes one's cost you a gig sometimes one makes you the ire of people on social media and you get fucking cancelled for a week it's not that deep let's all relax all these guys are multi-millionaires all their kids go to fucking private school it's fine like chill and I, what Shane Gillis here was doing was referencing how other people were talking about that in a very offhanded comment. And to take it away, I got a problem. Even when Daniel D. Kim says this, he's not saying it. Yeah, exactly. Look look at the comments here. It's like, I think I've got some people that get it in the fucking chat here. Big up um, uh, <laughs> Young Old Vibes. <laughs> Callan should just move to Spain. Those are his people. Exactly. Quayla, you know, Callan choked choked a homeless person to death right before the speech. Exactly. Don't give me all this fucking save the people. We we love everybody. One nation. I don't see color. I don't see race nonsense. Just stop being a piece of shit to women and whatever it may be and fucking Bobby Lee and you're fine. You know what I mean? You don't have to fucking, like, um, my guy, Big Up Fashion Road, man, um, the sig- <laughs> this virtual signal beam all the way to Mars. It's just too much. It's just too much. What's that word called? Uh, oh, I forgot the word. There's a, there's a word for it. Where, like, you try, you try to kind of, you get on your soapbox to say these sort of things in an effort to sort of, you know, hide or mask what you actually are like in real life those kind of things like you're just ta- you're just doing and saying too much it's not that deep i've got what the fucking phrase is but anyway let's continue in the same context he, he goes there has to be a joke in there somewhere he's referencing it was an awful podcast even the content's not good yeah. he sh- fire him for having a bo- bad podcast not for being racist scroll excuse me rewind that again imagine brendan saying you have a bad podcast can you imagine how angry you'd be let's go back one more time let's hear Bre- brendan say they have a bad podcast even when Daniel D. Kim says this, he's not saying it in the same context. He, he goes, there has to be a joke in there somewhere. He's referencing, it was an awful podcast. Even the content's not good. Yeah. He sh- fire him for having a bo- bad podcast, not for being racist. Scroll up. <laughs> Who, who's, who's the other comic? <laughs> he said that's so offhand. That is so rude and petty. This is the thing I've said from the beginning, right? One of the things I think that's really interesting about the whole anti Brendan Shaw shit that exists out there and this whole little sub community scene of people that fucking rip into him and the fucking Reddit. If you think about it, right? If you think about it, really, Brendan is actually just getting back the energy he puts out because I have always said and I maintain he's the biggest hater of anybody out there even more so than the worst person that posts on the subreddit worse than me worse than uniques worse than red bar worse than anybody you see he's actually a worse kind of hater because he doesn't actually know he actually thinks he's a good guy that's the thing he thinks he's a good guy he doesn't think he's a hater because he's just in his position so he thinks he's just talking about the industry stuff but when you actually listen to him when you actually hear him speak he's usually jealous of his friends he usually lies about his fucking selling out of his tours. He's usually talking down on people, fighters, other comedians, shows he's fucking watch. He's really, at his core, a consummate hater. And the fact that he's receiving all this energy back is because he puts that energy out there. That's the real funny part about it. He complains and cries about it, but this guy is the biggest hater out there, if you think about it. Because he, let's, let's all just keep this in mind. He's only saying this, right, about Shane and Matt's podcast. Why is he saying this? Keep this in mind. Not because he thinks the show's actually shit. It's not because of that. It's because at that time, Matt and Shane weren't in the GRE Extended Universe. They weren't a part of Joe Rogan's 
um, protected class of comedians or his friends. They weren't part of the cool group. They were on the outskirts a little bit. That's why he said that because they weren't part of that. In, they weren't part of the in group. And if I remember correctly, at that time, maybe Shane might have said some things here and there that he said. You know, he might have said some sly little remarks and digs at Brendan, which he might have seen or heard about. Which is why he kind of let that little barb lie in there about the podcast being bad. But as soon as Rogan brought him in, brought those guys into his inner circle, suddenly Brendan changed his tune on Matt and Shane because Rogan said they were cool. He now all of a sudden thought they were cool. Because if he actually had, you know, a taste or a point of view, an actual real opinion. Yo, big up, Austin. Appreciate you, brother. Afghanistan, Brian Callum. <laughs> Afghanistan, yeah. <laughs> big up him. The fact that he was born in the Philippines says everything about him, isn't it, really, right? He was born in fucking Filipino. <laughs> he's, he's an actual Filipino. <laughs> That to me says everything about fucking Brian Callen. And yeah, I mean, he wasn't born in the slums either. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't fucking speak Tagalog. He was just born in some fucking US embassy somewhere out there. You know what I mean? While his dad was traveling the world fucking, you know, allegedly funneling money back to the CIA. Who knows? But anyway, we continue. Um, yeah, Brendan's a fucking hater. Anyway, it's clear. W. Kamal Bell. Kamal Bell goes hard. I'm a Bell fan. Too. Who's that? He's on know. CNN. He has a yeah, show on he's CNN. Brilliant. Kamal Bell is brilliant, man. On CNN, he's he's he's. I I really like him. <laughs> Can you tell something? I don't want to nitpick too much, but he didn't know what Kamal Bell show who he was on. What he was talking about, he didn't know. So he waited for Chin to say it. Then he said CNN. <laughs> That's why he ignored Callan. Listen to again. He didn't know. He just said that guy is brilliant because I guess probably Joe Rogan said he's brilliant. So he just rabbit it, but he couldn't remember what show he was on. So this guy's brilliant, but you don't know what show he's on. Hmm. Listen again. Listen again. I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but listen. W. Kamal Bell. CNN too. Kamal Bell goes hard. I'm a Bell fan. Dude. Who's that? He's on know. CNN. He, has a <laughs> he went quiet. Who's that? Kamal Bell goes hard. I'm a Bell fan. Dude. Who's that? He's on know. CNN. He has a yeah, show on CNN. Brilliant. Kamal Bell is brilliant, man. On CNN, he's he's. <laughs> <laughs> then he said CNN. He didn't know what show he was on. I fucking love Brendan, man. He's so he's so easy to read. Anyway, let's continue. He's I re I really like him. So what's he saying? They're saying that's it's a joke that's already been done. In yeah, I don't make those jokes. Comics and TV. I, I don't make those jokes, and I've I've always been fairly sensitive to this, only because I have. A I don't make those jokes, but I rape. <laughs> <laughs> that's a better thing to say isn't it right at least i'm not a bad comedian <laughs> i sell out shows and i'm not a bad comedian that's the, that should be good enough right forgive me for the raping a little bit i've read a little bit about what it is to be chinese american Keep in this country in. it's not easy it hasn't been until very recently remember when in in you ever see crazy rich asians Mm -hmm. when when those when they came into the no way is he talking about the plight of asian people and using crazy rich asians as an example <laughs> these motherfuckers they think movies are bio autobiographical don't they they think movies are basically documentaries but basically documentaries nowadays are movies but they actually think these are actually reflective of real life experiences no books <laughs> No, nothing. Just vibes. <laughs> I watched Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> you remember that Bruce Lee movie? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Heard of Jackie Chan? Excuse me? Like, what does that have to do with the plight of Asian people? <laughs> I was listening to this one MIA song. <laughs> and it told me everything I need to know. Honestly. The hotel... And the hotel maitre d was very rude to them. That was a reality. That's what Chinese people dealt with all the fucking time. Then hold on, 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 hold on. Did Brian Callen only realize that scenario of an immigrant family going to a, another country hotel in a nice area of town and maybe being treated like a lower class person? Did he only realize that those interactions happen sometimes because of that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
the the only is the only depiction of black and brown people being stopped in nice cars by the police happened because of a movie he watched no anyway 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 you get what he said and then i want to see shane gillis's reply uh brendan just see if i can see it let's see, no, let's see what shane gillis's reply was because i think there was a video here somebody uploaded where is it there it is shane gillis's roast brendan on the matt and shane secret podcast so this is from four months ago let's see what matt, shane gillis said not in response but maybe somewhere in response right let's see if you can find it there it is here what do you say because i want to see what he actually said in the end Oh God, crazy rich Asians, you know. <laughs> True. Oh, I was looking at uh, Reddit. I was looking at uh, the fighter and the kids Reddit. Dude, fucking hilarious. Tough stuff. But bro. while I was looking at it, <laughs> I, they had a post about us. For real? For shit, yeah, dude. Shout out the homeless cats. And uh, yeah. hell yeah, dude. <laughs> they're fucking hilarious. It is very funny. The dynamic is like, insane. Looking down through the comments, and one of them just said, "Hi, Shane." And I was just like, "Oh fuck, that's hilarious." It made me laugh. Being like, I know you're going to read He's this. He's going to read this, yeah. Fuck it was dude. really funny. That's, that's funny, actually hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Shane. Damn, that's that. what's up, dude. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. That could be our fucking, that could be our fan base, dude. Let's poach him. You want to poach him? <laughs> I mean, I would, if, yeah, I, yeah. We Hell yeah. I mean, dude, that whole subreddit is dedicated to just hating on that podcast. Uh, and I know. I looked it, into it more. You think they're razzing him? There's definitely some real hate. Yeah. But there's also definitely like, this is funny. This Raz and the guy. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I think that's true. It's probably twofold. Hate and the razzing. I think the hate comes from similar to what BGL suffered from. I think a lot of people in that sub, maybe myself included at some point, you just can't believe somebody as dumb as Brendan has been able to have this level of success, right? In terms of like monetary success, life success, all that's lucky. You just can't believe that to be true. It just doesn't make any sense, right? The guy's legitimately redacted, yet he's a on paper millionaire. It doesn't make any sense in that regard. And then you think about his arrogance and stuff and the entitlement and thinking that he's actually there because of any talent and not because of the help of Rogan and stuff. And it makes you go crazy. But a lot of people also, it's just fun. Because these guys somehow, like good locales, because I think most people, if you had a subreddit of like 100,000 plus people ribbing into you, you might like change your approach to things based on what they say. You might correct course. You might realize, okay, cool. Maybe I do interrupt too much. Maybe I don't get my facts straight. Maybe I do come across like a bully. Whatever, you'll notice something that they say about you that you, you also don't like to hear and you try and make it right. And then the, the sub will slowly die because you, over time, become a better person because they're pointing out shit you do wrong. But these guys, like good locales, they just keep on keeping on. As they say in the Reddit, Brendan just goes. There is no stop. There is no chill in his game. Like we found out with Chris Alea, he, he got exposed in that documentary. No, so he gets exposed, he gets cancelled. The documentary comes out. And you listen to the documentary and some of the girls are basically saying the same day that he recorded that pot, that video where he's apologizing and speaking really quietly and I'm sorry, I have to get to therapy and I'm sorry, I'm a pedo. He did that video. He was still texting girls. So these guys are the same. You know, they, they, they read the stuff they see on there probably, but they, that, it doesn't change their behavior. It just continues. So that's why that place will never die because these guys will never change because they don't think they did anything wrong. You know, like, genuinely think they did nothing wrong that's the crazy thing about them like makes it such a special place to kind of visit because i don't think any other person in their in their shoes would let that sub just keep on keeping on they would honestly try to just correct course i'd be like okay cool i'm i, I can't have people fucking me over or taking the piss out of me every single day like this i've got to make things right but they don't because in you know in their to their core they think they're the good. They, they they think they're good guys. They think they're right. They think they're justified in what they do. It's pretty pretty hilarious. So that's why the, the Reddit will never die. I don't think it's necessarily all bitter true, hatred. True. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty much dedicated towards <laughs> yeah, being like yeah, yeah. fucking. They don't post like funny clips. They post just like <laughs> him fucking up. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Which that's... is. That's what I was talking about last week. How it's funny now that there's that's a whole thing in and of itself. Like we're gonna meet every day and just completely fucking try to tear this dude down. <laughs> and you know, of course, the razzing him, but yeah. it's still like, dude, I'm looking at that being like, I would like to think I'd be able to take that day in and day out, 
But I would bend to the mob. I'd be like, "Fucking, I'll I'll do whatever you stop making fun of me." Yes, See? I, I would bend to that 14, mob. Fourteen thousand people. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Regular, decent people, well-adjusted people, would somehow along the way think, "Hold on, if if that that many people keep saying shit about me, surely there's some 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 semblance of a reason why there must be some you know there must be some truth to what they're saying." And they'll investigate and try and correct course. But those guys are just the personification of locales and really are like consummate narcissists because they honestly don't think they do anything to warrant whatever attention they get on that Reddit or just in general. They don't get it at all. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm a good guy. I'm a beast of a guy, beast of a dad, great guy, never met him. And that's it. It's fucking hilarious. There's four. If there was, they're, they're homeless cats, dude. It's an entire city dedicated. They're called homeless cats. I know. Cause, yeah, because they made fun of. Yeah, I, 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 b -b -b beast, dude. I, <laughs> I'm all in. On <laughs> <laughs> I watched that whole incel documentary about fucking. Uh, the, oh, the guy that made that a documentary about. Yeah, so I know, I know exactly job. what's going on in that subreddit. So I watched that documentary, and then I went to the subreddit. And I'm like, whoa, dude! There's like a whole space. <laughs> We can just act there's this a whole shit. subculture of these people. You just there's like a small fucking yeah. city worth fourteen thousand. Yeah, a small city's worth of people, like a rural town's worth of people, who are dedicated towards like watching your every move. And like, idiot, <laughs> like, idiot, you pussy, moron, pussy, bitch. But I'm yeah. the, the sin they're punishing for him for is taking that like kind of elitist attitude towards his fan base. He was kind of like, yeah, "You guys are fucking losers. I'm fucking killing it." They're like, "Dude." We'll just, we'll hive mind make fun of you. <laughs> it's like, dude, I would instantly cave. Yeah. I'm like, sorry. I think the first indication of it, of that, because I think a lot of it as well, my current theory as well, running from it, my current running theory of the intensity of the hate that they get, I think has to do with sometimes fans feeling like you, you kind of, you cheat, like you trick them. Because I think, like, the reason why the Fire and the Kid was so successful in the beginning, because they actually did have a lot of legit fans, like myself. Like, I watched, I, I think I might have even paid for t -Fac, I'm, I'm honestly afraid to admit this, but I think I might have even paid for t -Fac K 3 d or whatever it was called, live or whatever. That fucking DVD thing, I think I may have paid for it. That was how much of a fan I was. So I think some people, when you start off being fans of somebody, and then you feel like you got tricked because they turn into a cunt, you may be become an intense hater because you don't feel you don't like the feeling of being duped maybe that's part of it because they were cool to begin with they were i swear to god try and watch the first episodes of fire and the kid they were perfectly fine but a lot of that might have to do with the fact that both of them hadn't have, hadn't made it yet they hadn't got the riches they hadn't got the success and the fame and then as soon as that came the attitude changed switched so quickly and it was so jarring to see but the real inkling the real hint of there was a big issue was when brendan shared that story about throwing that guy through a fucking glass window and then most people even in the comments of the video said hey that's not cool somebody writes in a pretty decent even handed email basically telling brendan that you know that's not cool when they used to read fan submission now they don't read any submissions out they used to sometimes read emails brian reads the email out and Brendan responded to it so badly, it made him look like, you know, he basically showed how thin-skinned he was. Everyone was like, oh, you're an actual bully then. You know what I mean? This is what you're, you're not actually seeing it from the other people's point of view of like how this story comes across and doesn't make you look well or look good at all. And now you're responding in this really arrogant, shutting down, bullying kind of dismissive way. I think that was the first sort of like domino. And then it all, it kind of went, from then on and it kind of never basically recovered then because you know then the whole fucking homeless cats uh pf chang shit fucking went on as well so it's a bit of a shame but anyway let's not watch the whole thing you can check out yourself um night and shane secret podcast the clip is there that's what it's called and we'll move on to the next topics but yeah